coming up tonight, Parliament is sharply divided over calls for the resignation of Dom Kwabenya MP Sarah Adwasafo. It's such a genuine concern, and uh, it's important that we we also appreciate the fact of family. Uh, as a colleague member of Parliament, I really sympathise with her and sympathise with the situation. I think that Adwa needs some attention. If you look at the commentary that is coming, she needs some attention. We have details as some residents of her constituency, Dom Kwabenya, have been reacting to the responses she is given for her absence. Just tell her we need her to perform her duties in the constituency. That's all that we can say. What is right and what is wrong. So I don't see why she should absent herself from her official duty. Also, majority in parliament has accused Speaker Alban Bagbing of impatience in asserting that the legislature is broke. Speaker's statement was a bit presumptuous, and I, I with the greatest respect to him, he had been, he has exercised a bit of restraint. Uh, I think that he he may not have made that comment. The parliament is broke. The NPP regional executive elections began today across the country. We'll bring you details of what happened throughout the country. Continue to get our seats safe. We are talking about women. You see, somebody will come and say, Oh, I want to break the eight. I want to break the eight. It is not about breaking the eight, it's about what you will do to break the eight. We also have details of how 166 million cities worth of soya beans and other grains were exported from Chiripone in the northeast region to neighboring Togo, Nigeria, and Benin at the blind side of the state. According to data from the District Agric Office in Cherepone, in January 2021, 1.6 million city worth of soya beans was transported to Togo and Nigeria. There were huge jubilations after the regional executive elections of the new patriotic party in the Bono East region came to an end. All sides were seen hoisting their flags amidst dancing and shouting. We understand the elections took place amidst tight security at the Kintampo College of Health and Wellbeing, where more than 240 delegates from 11 constituencies of the region cast their ballot. So who won what? Our Bono East Regional Correspondent, Anna Sabet, has joined us uh, with details of the elections. Anna, first of all, uh, when did the um, election come to an end? Yes, um if you can hear me, the election came to an end uh, somewhere at 3 p.m. And uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, issues were to be resolved before the accounting uh, began. Uh, that delayed the accounting process uh, in its entirety. But uh, we were able, issues were able to be resolved and uh, the accounting started uh, amidst tight security. Uh, at the point, all media personnel were asked to leave the hall and uh, the party elders were able to resolve the issues uh, that were, was a, you know, because, uh, as I speak to you, everything has come to uh, an end. We have uh, the full results uh, in already uh, with lots of changes uh, so far the chairmanship position uh, is concerned. Uh, the chairmanship is, we have a new person occupying the chairmanship position. We have a new entrant occupying the first chairmanship position. And then the second chairmanship position is also having a new person. All incumbents in the uh, chairmanship race have lost their positions. Uh, only about four out of the 11, uh, uh, you know, persons occupying the various positions, the 10 positions were able to retain their seats. So we have new faces, uh, you know, as so far as the elections is concerned. Uh, the chairmanship position, we have uh, a new entrant, Ibrahim Baba Bukhari, who won the chairmanship position in a slide, landslide. Uh, he won with, uh, you know, 151 votes compared to the incumbent who polled uh, 78. Uh, we have a new person occupying the first chairmanship position, the person of Dr. King David Kwao Ansa, and then the second vice chairman also, Baba Ahmed Abdullah, uh, also won that particular uh, position. With the incumbents were able to retain their seats, I want to ask you then, uh, quickly, David Bachi uh, has been the uh, general, uh, general secretary of the party, he won, he retained his position. Mahama uh, said the man also was able to retain his position. And then Musa Suleimana, the organizer of the party, was also able to retain his position. And then the women's organizer, Sophia Afri Danso, was also able to uh, retain her position. Uh, so, um, uh, briefly, this is how it ended here in the Bono region, uh, entirely, generally, I, I can say. 
that the elections was held uh, peacefully mm. uh, here in the Inter College of Health. Well, um, in the northern region, counting has completed and winners as well as losers have been declared. Let's take you to Tamale and speak to our regional correspondent, Martina Bogri, for the latest on this. Uh, Martina, bring us up to speed with the latest on the ground. Counting and the, um, the results declared and the winners were in. Now, this is how it went. The natural coordinator went to Alaji Fatao Adam Dandira. Um, the youth organizer went to Mohammed Al Hassan Ghana. And the women's organizer went to Adia Rahina Aziz. And then the national, the regional organizer went to Sarifu Rashid. And then the treasurer, Yusuf Toibu, vice chair, went to Abdul Rahman Salihu Mahama. And then secretary went to Dr. Hudu Zakaria. And chairman went to Mohammed Bantima Samba. Now, it was a clearly contested election, especially the chairmanship position. And there were times that they had to halt the elections because tensions were up and they needed to get everything resolved. Fortunately, the elections ended peacefully and then the, the results declared. The winners, the losers congratulated the winners and then everybody went home peacefully. All right. Now, thank you very much. Earlier in the day, we reported that six people were picked up from the grounds of the elections. What has the police gathered so far on them? Joining us with some answers is the Regional Crimes Officer of the Northern Police Command, Superintendent Bernard Baba Ananga. Chief, why were these people picked up in the first place? Uh, good evening. Good evening to your list of uh, from the Northern region. Early morning, that is what early this morning, around 0300 hours uh, to 0400 hours, that is today, the morning, we had to scan the environment, the venue for the election, and uh, that is the stadium, Ali Mahama Sports Stadium being the venue, and we needed to ensure that uh, nothing untoward happened before, during, and after. We also had to take into consideration issues of uh, terrorism uh, packages or items that are left unattended to within third venues. We want to make sure that uh, we are not taken unaware, okay. and we had to do that. In the course of scanning the uh, environment, we, we came across these suspects who were hiding one, uh, one of the... At an obscure place within the premises of the stadium. We finally chased them and arrested them, uh, realizing that those people had some behavior that raised our suspicion. We went ahead to conduct searches on them. Mm. Uh, one of them will managed to retrieve some uh, tablets suspected to be trammeled. Others were also found with some currency notes, dollar notes that uh, appeared to be fake. And uh, whereas we continued, we identified one other person who was also in another obscure corner uh, that we believe they were all hiding there for uh, a very purpose that uh, we believe uh, would affect our security environment. Mm. So we decided to pick them up. And uh, lo and behold, some of the searches that we conducted will retrieve this of this exhibit. We are still investigating and uh, we hope to extend our investigations to other places that we think uh, we can make a headway and possibly uh, screen them and charge those responsible mm. or the culprits for court. But, but from your interaction with them so far, what have you gathered and what are your suspicions? And of course, uh, as uh, Martina Eleon indicated, that uh, along the line, uh, the environment became so charged such a way that some of the spectators around that area were not in agreement on certain terms that were brought there. And we, in fact, uh, the direction of the regional police commander had to identify some of the elements and try to take them out. Okay. Otherwise, we would have experienced a very uh, nasty situation. However, we managed to bring the situation under control for the elections to be managed, and then it concluded uh, peacefully. 
So therefore, we believe that some of these things that if they are not taken care of properly, sometimes they degenerate into a situation, a chaotic situation that you may not be able to manage. So we have to be proactive in our activities. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Superintendent Bernard Baba Ananga. He speaks for the Northern Region Police Commander. Now, let's take you to the Northeast Region, where the elections came off at the Nalerigo Senior High School. We understand that majority of the incumbent executives, including the chairman and the secretary, have all retained their seat. Elias Utanko is a man on the beat and has come through with this report. At the end of the voting, the regional chairman Nuruddin Fuseni retained his position with 72 votes against 50 and 20 for his contenders Akamara Bawa and Alaji Mohamed Shane respectively. The regional secretary Sule Sambian was maintained with a whooping 106 votes. The assistant secretary Yamusa Ibrahim was also retained with 107 votes. The youth organizer Mumuni Mohamed Nuruddin was also re-elected with 74 votes. The newly elected executives were immediately sworn into office by a national representative of the party. Speaking on behalf of his colleagues, your chairman Nuruddin Fuseni thanked the delegates and all other stakeholders for a successful election. He, however, assured party supporters that together with his team they will work hard to achieve the only and common agenda of ensuring the vice president Alaji Mahmoud Baumia was made the flag bearer of the party and the president of the country come 2024. <laughs> Now, still staying on the NPP elections, 21 candidates are contesting for 10 positions in the Eastern Regional New Patriotic Party executive election slated for Saturday, 28th May 2022. All the constituencies in the region would participate in the conference except the Kropon constituency due to an injunction placed on their constituency elections. A member of the elections committee who doubles as first vice chairman of the party, Al Haji. Uma Bodinga, this close to join you, says Maxwell Kudeko, that about 601 delegates would participate in the election. This Tuesday, when Akuyapim North, Akropon to be precise, are about on Wednesday to go in for the constituency primaries, somebody pull an injunction on that election. Automatically, that means Akuyapim North or Akropon cannot participate. So the 17 of them cannot vote because they don't have the voting right. The election hasn't been held based on the uh, injunction somebody has put. And we have two constituencies also. We, they are having problems about the list of their uh, appointees. So the regional leadership have given clear directive to those two constituencies. That's in Koko and Suhu. That they should abide by the directive from the regional leadership. The Eastern regional elections has attracted much interest from the presidency and other keen party stakeholders. The regional chairmanship position being contested by incumbent regional secretary Jeff Konedu Ado and new Jabe North constituency chairman Mr. Kwejo Boatse has generated a lot of interest. It has been touted by many as a contest between the presidency on one side and Brian Achampon and his allies on the other side. The second vice chairmanship position is also being keenly contested by Frank Apia, Paul Amenin and a former constituency chairman of the New Job and South constituency, Michael Otin Edu. Michael Otin Edu has been talking about why he needs to be given the opportunity to serve on the regional executives committee. Let's bring innovation into our part. I have suggested the creation of a welfare fund. I believe that if there is a welfare fund for constituency executives, who takes care of the ballot boxes, manages constituencies, they know we are coming up. If we have a communication fund, communication fund puts communication at a higher pedestal. Because the hope 
concept of politics. It's about communicating. So if you have a fund, that funds communication. Look at all the major companies. Advertising is a major issue. Let's make communication a major issue. Let's look at the way we reallocate uh, resources to constituencies to work. We cannot treat all constituencies alike. Government of government treats its budget different. Different ministries get different budgets. We should do the same with constituencies. Get Now, still in the Eastern Region, structures of the party have started public endorsement for some candidate government spokespersons and new patriotic party communication team members in the Eastern Region have endorsed and declared support for the candidate of Kwajo Boating Ajiman for the new patriotic party Eastern Regional Chairmanship race. The group in a press conference held in Koforidua pleaded on the delegate to vote massively for Kwajo Boating Ajiman. The group says the MPP in its bid to break the eight requires leaders who believe in the legacy of President Akufuado and are in the position to trumpet, saying the group says Mr. Kojobwating is the best bet to chair the Eastern Region. Director of Communications for the New Patriotic Party in the Eastern Region, David Pra, addressed the press. New Patriotic Party Communications Directorate in the Eastern Region want to state it on record that as a party we support Chairman Kojobwating Ajeman. 100%. But Chairman Kojo Boatin Ajima 100% because this is an individual who has worked tirelessly for the party. Chairman Kojo Boatin began his political activities by carrying chairs and table for our elders anytime they organize uh, meetings. Aside that, he has been a polling station chairperson. Then he rose to become the first vice chairperson at the new job in North Constituency. Then he proceeded, became the new job in North Constituency chairman of our party. He also, because of dint of hard work and his commitment, tenacity of purpose to the activities of the region, and for that matter, the party, we uh, our regime, that's a uh, uh, honorable case, Nakumin Kipsis regime, appointed him as a chairperson for the Resource Mobilization Committee. This is very critical committee that uh, went nook and cranny of the country looking for resources. And so, as a chairperson, they, he led the team to bring a lot of resources. Now still staying with the MPP elections and 37 delegates for Saturday's MPP regional elections could be disenfranchised because their names have gone missing in the voters' album. The group, all president of Tescon from the various tertiary institutions in the Ashanti region, are grieved with the turn of event just a day to the elections. At a press conference, they accused the leadership of the party for allegedly removing their names. Nana Eoku reports. Out of the 58 Tescon presidents in Ashanti region, 37 names have allegedly been removed from the delegates' album. Tescon, which is the tertiary arm of the new patriotic party, plays a critical role in the party numbers. Tescon president for Christ Apostolic University, Emmanuel La, claims his name has been removed and replaced with his Nasara coordinator, Dixon Baba Mbugri. This man, Nasara coordinator, I was replaced by him and he's not aware of it. They added his picture, but with the wrong number. And nobody has called him to confirm that you are the delegate or you are going to vote. They just added his picture to the album and he's not aware. Nasara coordinator Dixon Baba in Mugri, who confirmed it, claimed he had no idea. According to him, he noticed his name in the album today, but the contact was wrong. Let's find out. Is it true? Yes, please. It's true. I'm the Nasara coordinator, Christ Apostolic University College. And per the constitution of uh, our, our party mm. uh, and Tescon to mm. we know that the head of the Tescon in every institution, that's the president, mm. is supposed to represent us at every conference and at every delegate conference. So I know that he is supposed to go in and vote as a delegate. That's the president of my institution. But what came out from the album is that my name came out on the album and my picture, but the other information, that is the, the, the number and then the phone number is not mine. Other Tescon presidents who are victims expressed similar challenges. In the person of Ahmadou Abdel Fatal, 
the Tescon founding president of Royal and College of Health. Like me, for instance, I've been removed and replaced by a certain girl called Priscilla Enchua, who is not even a Tescon member. We are just asking the regional youth wing, headed by the Mr. Dennis Kwakwa, to as soon as possible ratify the election, unless we are moving to the court of law. We are the intellectual youth wing of the party. So we are going to work through the right channel, the right medium, and we are going to make sure that our words are noted. And whatever we are going to say is going to be done. We are going, we are going to stand on our feet and we are going yeah, to yeah, see to yeah, it that yeah. the right thing is done. Yeah. The group has therefore petitioned both the national and regional leadership of the party to correct the They are anomaly. petitioning the national executives and then whoever, the every stakeholder, whoever is involved, to come to our aid. Because we can't um, take the party, we can't win an election in 2020 and then continue to go and win an election in 2024 with this kind of attitude. The Ashanti Regional NPP Executive Elections is meanwhile scheduled for Saturday, 28th May at the Babaira Sports Stadium. Ewuku Malik's reports for Joy News. So we can now take our editorial on how Ghana's forest reserve is being shared among the political elite. Yenara Yasasini. Such a well-composed patriotic song. But thanks to recent events, I can't listen to it with a straight face anymore. And am I the only one who has noticed the interesting relationship between this government and the word Asasi? Anyway, to say that Ghanaians are heartbroken about revelations from the leaked will of the late Kwejo Usufriye, aka Sir John, is an understatement. Willing part of the Achimota forest to his family was shocking. But equally shocking is the sheer number and range of property that he acquired within three years. Now, I don't think anyone is saying Sir John cannot own property. We know he has worked as a lawyer for many years and has in all likelihood acquired something for himself in that time. But what boggles the mind are the dates he acquired many of these assets. So let's begin. In September 2017, he acquired one house in Oyarifa. In February 2018, he acquired another in Ogbuju, East Lagos. Then in May 2018, he acquired another house at Oyarifa No. 2. In, in August 2019, he added another house known as the White House at Ajringano, Accra, to his portfolio. Then a six-bedroom house at Patangbe, Ogbuju, near East Lagos. A four-bedroom house located in Mempehusem in East Legon. A three-bedroom house in Mimpehusem in East Legon. Another three-bedroom house also in, in Mimpehusem in East Legon. A four-bedroom house located in East Legon and acquired in October 25, 2018. A four-story building in East Legon with, a, with 10 three-bedroom apartments and five two-bed apartments. Ooh, give, give me a moment to catch my breath. Sir John has worked all his life. But let's be fair, it is curious that he acquired so many of these properties between 2017 and 2020. What is the salary of the chief executive of the Forestry Commission? Or could it be that Sir John invested his money in some wondrous investment scheme whose returns suddenly matured between 2017 and 2020? Oh, and I didn't even mention the many plots and acres of land he acquired across the country. He bequeathed 0.987 of an acre in Achimota Forest, held in the name of Faso Limited, the same company that curiously donated a vehicle to the Forestry Commission while he was chief executive. There was also a 5.541 acre parcel of land also in Achimota Forest, held in the name of Jacke Pros Limited, a 5.07 acre land at the Ramza site, Sakumono. This one beggars belief, a Ramza site. Then there was a plot of land near the Chain Homes Estate at East Airport Hills. And then there was, 
you know what? I won't annoy you by listing the number of cars in his will. Instead, I want you to listen to this. I've said it and I'll repeat it again. Those who are coming to this administration thinking that it's an avenue for making a lot of money are going to be disappointed. <laughs> they better go to the private sector. That is where people make money, not in government. Mr. President, I would like you to know that Sir John enriched himself while in office. Too bad you can't do anything to him because he died before we found out. And we will assume he died before you found out too. But Mr. President, people are outraged. People are disgusted. People have now formed and firmed a strong opinion that your government is corrupt. Here at Joy News, we doubt that this is the legacy that you want to leave. Sir John did not declare his assets. As we speak, is he the only one in your government not to have done so? How do we track those who make wealth overnight? I guess our only chance is for their wills to leak after they are long gone. Mr. President, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado, for the sake of your much prized legacy, please do something before your term expires. Yenara Yasasini. As for the rest of us, it's clear that the Asase does not belong to you and me. But we all know the people who own the Asase. Welcome back from the break. Now, Parliament is uh, sharply divided over calls for the resignation of Dom Kwabenya MP Sarah Ajwa Safo. After a long silence, the embattled gender minister who is facing Parliament's Privileges Committee on grounds of absenteeism revealed exclusively to join news. She has not been officially invited to face the charges. When asked why she was given up on the MPP, Sarah Ajwa Safo said she remains loyal to the MPP and to the president and will return to take up her ministerial position. She was at one point Ghana's most wanted MP. She was wanted by the presidency, parliament and her party. They needed her to back their numbers in parliament to approve government's most critical revenue measure, the e-levy, without which the finance ministry had said the economy will probably collapse. Well, for eight months, try as they did, no one could find her. But Joy News did, and Sarah Adrasafo seized the moment from her base in the USA, live on a Zoom connection, to set the record straight. Um, my son has been unwell, and that is why I had to come here to the United States to, sh I mean, um, be the mother and the best mother that I could be. And um, I'm still here making sure that all that is settled with my son and all the authorities and the school and it's still ongoing. Um, I've been a deputy leader of um, Ghana's parliament and I know the rules and I know that um, the privileges committee wants me to be in parliament but as we speak, I don't know that I've been invited. I she says the president was fully aware of her reasons for being absent. Um, communication I have sent to His Excellency the President, and he's very much aware of what is happening to me and my family. And um, that's what I expect every Ghanaian to understand, that I am not intentionally abandoning my duties and my responsibilities. I have served the people of Ghana for 12 years. I entered politics when I was young, and I have done it. And there has not been any past record of me absenting myself like this. That should tell people that there's really something that ought to be done with family. And I know that you will put family first. So um, they should all stop praying and keep praying for us. And I know with God, everything is possible, and we're going to pull through it. She and two other MPs are subject of a probe by Parliament's Privileges Committee that may lead to her seat being declared vacant. 
The committee began work yesterday, but she says she has not been invited. I've been a deputy leader of um, Ghana's parliament, and I know the rules, and I know that um, the Privileges Committee wants me to be in parliament, but as we speak, I don't know that I've been invited. I have to be served, and I, I'm not aware that any such thing has been given to me. I'm just hearing it from you. So all throughout the process, when it was announced even by the speaker that you'd be facing the committee, no official document has come to, not even your office in Ghana, communicating that to you officially? No. So this would then mean that you'll not be appearing before the committee? As you can see, I'm here in the United States, and I don't know that I was supposed to. I mean, if the speaker says that you've been referred, the committee has to sit and have its own modalities of how we're going to appear, when and how, the dates, what information they're requiring, and I don't think I have all that information as we speak right now. Mm. Uh, and that's really surprising because uh, just a few minutes ago we heard from Ricky Tegan, one of the mem members of the committee, stating uh, that your shadow is next. So. How come you've not been communicated to? Because he's, he's quite sure that at least you are well informed about what the processes are and how the committee is going to go about its uh, proceedings. I'm just hearing it from you, and I got a message from my personal assistant that you guys wanted to talk to me about it. And that's why I showed up right now. Mm. So is it true that she blackmailed the government when they needed her to pass the e-levy? That is so, so untrue. And, um, and that's what I'm saying. I forgive anybody who goes out there or who went out there to insult me because of um, PSA and third party people or uh, the people telling them what they think they know, which is all untrue. And I, my, even my personal assistant has come in to debunk all of that. And the reason I didn't come out immediately to do that is that as a seasoned senior politician, when people are speaking loudly and you speak, you're not heard. And this is the time for me to explain why I kept my silence. And my silence was because it was too rowdy, it was too loud, and now everything is calm and people will listen to what you got to say. So when will she return to Ghana? To represent her people. She's going to return when issues with family are well sorted out. And that is not something that I can predict. Since I have resigned, it's implied. When I touch down, I am going to do what I have to do as a minister, since I haven't been relieved of my post yet. I guess I will concludes by stating that she forgives all her colleagues, both in parliament and in government, who spoke against her publicly. Meanwhile, first Deputy Speaker Joseph Oseusu, who doubles as chairperson of the Privileges Committee, has reacted to the claims. He says sanctions will be enforced if the MP, Sarah Adwasafo, does not show up before the committee. As to whether she has received them or not, I can't confirm. But what I can tell you is that the committee has formally written to her. We sent her a letter through her email address through her WhatsApp number, and through her office. So it is obvious that... What then would your committee intend to do? Of course, because she has not responded to us, we will send a reminder. In any case, we have rescheduled our meetings. So we will send her a reminder. When we spoke to her yesterday, it was obvious that she's not coming to Ghana any time soon. That's obvious. It's according to your no, view. No, she said that when she is done with her family, that's, she, that is when she will But come. that's your interpretation. The mm -hmm. obvious is your interpretation. So, not her words. So, uh, Leader, my question, Speaker, my question is, if she does not appear before the Privileges Committee, what then happens? The committee will take a decision. And what would the decision be? How can I talk about a decision when we haven't taken it? The committee will take a decision... When we get there, will that be a breach of parliamentary <laughs> procedure and parliamentary? <laughs> but if she wouldn't come to Ghana, would you consider to do a Zoom uh, interview or whatever? Yes, in our letter to her, we stated so that we offer her the opportunity to interview her via Zoom. It is stated in her letter, in the letter to her, not yet. So we we know that um, 
Uh, let me say, we cannot confirm whether the letter sent through her secretary has reached her. I was surprised to read that the same person through whom we sent the letter, the same person through whom the press managed to get her to talk. So we'll review all that when we get to sit her, her son is not well able. The committee consider that. How can That's I talk says. about... Mm. Let me put this on record. Okay. The committee is a court. That is the court of parliament. And so discussing anything to do with the content and outcomes is prejudicial. I'm talking because she has alleged that he hasn't received her. So I want the world to know what the steps we have taken. But I cannot discuss the content or the conclusions. That will be prejudicial. So what about uh, other members of parliament? Uh, we've uh, been speaking to some of them, and they've been saying that ever since uh, they heard about Ajwa Safu, they needed to come out to also share their thoughts on This is what they, they've been telling us. Clearly from what she's saying, she has a genuine concern. And um, as a colleague, I, 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 it's important that we, we also appreciate the fact of family. Obviously, if somebody is talking about family, it is important that you take a critical look at it because after this job, she will go back to her family. We will all go back to family. And obviously, if she has a family problem that needs her attention, I think, I mean, it's in order um, 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 to, to grant her that leeway. However, it is also important for us to also appreciate the fact that um, her constituents um, who need her to um, represent them adequately. So um, we, we need to find a way of blending that too, that family issues and, uh, and, and, and the parliamentary job, so that I mean the constituents will also have their say in parliament, as well as um, um, she was also be, uh, she will be able to also resolve some of the family issues. So I strongly believe that, obviously, um, it is in the hands of the leadership and the, and, and the party um, to take it up to know exactly what um, to do. But I uh, they are legitimate, very legitimate comments and observations. But uh, as a colleague member of parliament, I really sympathize with her and sympathize with the situation. Because, and you know, her situation makes it even more complex because she was a former leader. So if backbenchers or members were having these challenges, how would she have handled it? And so the whole thing is quite complex. And I wish she could actually come down, meet the committee, meet leadership of the party, meet leadership of parliament, and conclude. You see, you can't take permission forever. <laughs> For that, it's impossible. And you know, you don't have this, you don't go into a situation where you are forced to be pushed. I would rather prefer her to jump. You know, she should take the lead and jump. Because from the way she spoke, I listened to her. If I have listened to her three times. Oh, I see. Yeah. And first I must commend Joy FM for trying to get her for us. You, you've been struggling to get her. You've managed to find we managed to, You've done well. We must commend your station for that. Yeah. And I was very worried on the aspect of she has not gotten any communication from the committee. And you can see the I've been my checks with Parliament. They said that is false. They have made arrangements to contact her. They've served her through all the available channels. I even understand they are even ready to communicate with her the way you did. Uh, this matter is a very controversial one, and um, I will be a bit circumspect in my commentary, especially because she is speaking from the perspective of a woman. And if you check, uh, laws in this country, there are times that a woman, after giving birth, is given some few months to stay home, even as a public servant. And so um, it is not anything new. But the question is to the extent to which this has dragged, especially when he is a representative of the people of Dominica Benya, who also want to ensure that there is some amount of representation for them in parliament. Now, he gives the, she gives the indication that <clears throat> there is a certain kind of conflict between her family issues and 
for that matter, she is not able to do what is desired of her as a minister and a member of parliament. Um, I think that Ajua needs uh, some attention. If you look at the commentary that is coming, she needs some attention. She, she needs... Um, what should the party do? She needs attention. Now, Ghanaians have been reacting to the exclusive conversation with Sarah Ajua Safo. My colleague Samuel Mbura has been interacting with some Dom Kobenya constituents. Dom Kobenya is the largest constituency in Ghana. It has a voter population of over 100,000 on the voters' register. The Member of Parliament is Sarah Ajua Safo. The Honorable MP has been explaining why she has been away from parliamentary duties and attending to her constituents. Um, communication I have sent to His Excellency the President and he's very much aware of what is happening to me and my family. And um, that's what I expect every Ghanaian to understand, that I am not intentionally abandoning my duties and my responsibilities. I have served the people of Ghana for 12 years. I entered politics when I was young and I have done it. And there has not been any past record of me absenting myself like this. And that should tell people that there's really something that ought to be done with family. And I know that you will put family first. So um, they should all start praying and keep praying for us. And I know with God, everything is possible and we're going to pull through it. But some of the constituents hold the view that in as much as her reasons for absenting herself from parliament are justified, they still need her in the constituency to come and help them solve the challenges that are facing the constituency. We confided in her, that's why we voted for her. You understand? Why is it that the way a manner people trusted you, they, they entrust you and then put the whole constituency into your care? And you left the, the place and then go and stay abroad. If you wanted her to perform in abroad, she, she, she should go there and then perform there. All that we're saying, is, even the MPP party itself, they are very disappointed. Because if they want to vote something in the parliament, they have to beg you before you go to the place. Which is very bad. It's very awful. So uh, if you can reach her, just tell her we need her to perform her duties in the constituency. That's all that we can say. What is right and what is wrong. So I don't see why she should absent herself from her official duties. That is why, that is why people are worrying about it. Right now I can complain because I, I can see some difficulty in our area, our roads, and if our MP is not around, we don't know what to do. But that's why we have to, we have to wait for her to come. I don't have anything to say, but what I want to say is that, you know, he, he, he want to spoil MPP party in, because the people have voted for you. Instead of you to come and perform your duties as a, a parliamentarian, now they have let the opposition have got the, a chance. People can, everybody is talking about you, which is very bad. So we are begging him to come back. If he want to resign, you you he should come and resign so that you know, if MPP will get a, a suitable person to occupy your place, you know, that's it. You see? Because Sarah Joasafo is expected to appear before the Privileges Committee to justify her absenteeism. Samuel Mbura reporting from Dom Kobia constituency in the Greater Accra region. Now, Samuel, being executive, executive director of Parliamentary Network Africa, has been reacting to this development with my colleague, Blessed Saga, on the polls so and join news. Others of Parliament are very clear on issues of service of sermons to anybody who is supposed to appear before Parliament. And for the benefit of your viewers, uh, let me read Order 205. Order 2051 says, an order to attend or to produce documents before a committee, so in this case we are dealing with the order to attend, uh, shall be notified by a sermon signed by the clerk of the house or a committee and issued by the direction of mr speaker or the chairman of the committee as the case may be and we heard the chairman said that that particular sermons had been issued but 2052 says that the sermon shall state the time and when or the time when and the place where the person sermon is required to attend and the particular document which he or she is required to produce 
And it goes on to say interesting, and this is the very uh, part that is of interest to me. The sermons shall be served on the person mentioned therein by delivering to him a copy thereof, or by leaving it at his usual place of abode with some adult person, or where this is not known by publishing it in the press. A sermon under this order may be served by an officer of the house or a police officer. And that last part you just read there, perhaps may conclude the matters, right? The fact that the controversy as to whether or not she's been served personally. Well, she's challenging that, indicating that if you look at it critically, I know the rules, I have not been served. Well, and, and of course, she mentions uh, a number of times she being a former leader of the house. Of course, she's a lawyer. These standing orders are easy to read. Um, how, do, how does one get served? You get a letter in your known premises. And this is for people like you and I who do. Now, join news checks have revealed that one sister six million cities worth of soya beans and other grains were exported from Tripoli in the northeast region to neighboring Togo, Nigeria and Benin. The Agri Ministry last year placed a temporary ban on the export of grains as a measure to protect the collapsing poultry industry. In our latest upcoming hotline documentary, Broken Chain Join News reports the poor road in Tripoli are contributing to the flight of grains illegally to neighboring countries. According to data from the District Agri Office in Chiripone, in January 2021, 1.6 million CD worth of soya beans was transported to Togo and Nigeria. In February, the figure shot up to 2.3 million cities. In March, the tons exported through Chiripone was 2.2 million Ghana cities. In April, it was 1.6 million Ghana cities and saw a decline in May, which recorded 635,000 cities of soya beans being sent to Togo. But cumulatively, the metric tons of maize, rice, millet, soya beans, cowpea and sesame transported to Togo and Nigeria stood at over 166 million cities. District Agri Director at Terepone, Pascal Asigri, says this can be reversed if the roads connecting the district to local markets are put in good condition. Yes, so there's no doubt that the condition of the road from Yindi to Terepone affects the movement of agricultural produce from the district to larger markets in places like Tamale, Nigeria, Tichimal, and many more markets in Ghana. Closer to the district is uh, an alternative market avenue in Togo that uh, both farmers and aggregators are, have been exploiting for a number of years now. You had a set of upcoming latest documentary, Broken Chain, airing Monday on the Super Morning Show at 8.30 a.m. and 8.30 p.m. So uh, that's how we wrap up our edition for today. There's more on uh, myjawonline.com. My name is Samuel Kojo Brace. There will be prime business after the break.